don't let your fear of failing stop you because trust me, you are good enough to get into one of these programs. You are smart enough and you have the tools to succeed. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Adri Corti. The goal of my channel is to make academia entertaining and accessible. Today I am here with Remy and she's going to tell us all about summer undergraduate research programs um, and just give us a great resource if you guys are interested in that kind of thing. So what is a summer undergraduate research program? So there's a lot of different programs that students who are undergrads, particularly in the US, can participate in. And these are all paid programs for you to do research for about 10 weeks over the summer. Um, so in between classes or your semesters. And you just get to experience doing research at a different institution. Um, you're in a lab, you're doing work, um, basically full time, and then you get paid for it. That's awesome. So who should pursue these kind of programs? So anyone who is interested in doing research as a career, so whether that's you want to do research once you finish, finish college, you want to go on to secondary school, like a master's or a PhD, um, or even if you want to go on to professional school, like medical school, um, it's really great for your application or for your resume to say, I've participated in one of these programs because they're very high caliber research programs. Oh, cool. What's the, per the benefit of participating? You touched on it a little bit. Did you want to add to it? Yeah, so one of the big benefits is if you are at an undergrad institution that is smaller or maybe it doesn't have a strong research program, you won't have maybe experience that you need to once you graduate. And so these programs often give favor to people who are at those type of institutions to give them the opportunity to pursue research. Um, and you're also doing it in maybe a different environment. If your small school has research experiences that maybe you've participated in, it's great to show that you're able to adapt to a new environment, you're able to work in a larger team because they tend to be bigger schools or um, bigger in industries or government facilities. And so it's just a great way to get those skills and show that you can work in that type of environment. Nice. So did you participate in one of these programs? Yeah, so I did an NSF or the National Science Foundation funded research experience for undergrads. This is one of the biggest programs in America, I think. It covers a bunch of different topics. And actually one of the things that I really loved about my program is I was at the University of Nebraska Lincoln and it hosted about 10 or 11 different programs. So I was in one that was more biochemistry, redox biology, but my roommate uh, for the summer was in ecology, and then my sweet mate was in mechanical engineering and sociology. So I made friends all across like the nation because people were from different places. They were all pursuing something different from me, um, but I still had a cohort of people who were in a similar field. And we did some sorts of professional development events. Like we talked about the GRE, we talked about applying to graduate school, we talked about personal statements, and these were all accessible to us and we got like a lot of really good information from it. Wow, that's really cool. I didn't know they like helped you get ready to apply to grad school. Yeah, and I, my undergrad institution did not have grad students, but University of Nebraska-Lincoln, the one where I did my REU and most of the other like locations for REUs have grad students or they have people who are working as professional researchers so you get more exposure to those people you can go sit in on a panel ask some questions about like what's it like in grad school what is your experience um, here at the university or all universities so it's really beneficial yeah that's cool how did it change your career trajectory or did it I think it definitely increased my application so like I said I went to a small liberal small liberal arts college and they are great for kind of developing you, but you don't have experience in a big fast paced environment, which can be more 
of the institutions for graduate school. And so I think it made my application a lot more competitive to say that I've already had similar experiences, showed my adaptability, and I had connections at different universities. That's awesome. And you made an infographic with all this information about different undergraduate summer research programs. So we are going to show you guys that infographic and Remy is going to talk us through it. And then I'll also post the links that's in the infographic below. I should also be able to share then a link to the infographic itself for you to go check it out, download it and use it. So the NSF REU page, um, because it's one of the bigger programs, um, I decided to make one infographic specifically to that one because it covers a lot of different research experiences. A lot of what's on this infographic is kind of things that we've already talked about in this video, like who should apply. Um, also taking note that a lot of the programs will um, give preference to historically excluded groups or you have the opportunity to explain um, why this may specifically help you. Um, which is great to help increase diversity in science. Um, and then what is the different types of REUs? So there's a lot of different subjects. You don't have to just be interested in biology or biochemistry. There's like STEM, ed STEM education, chemistry, computer, earth, engineering, all sorts of different subjects. When um, the applications are usually December to March, the earlier you apply, the better. So my application, I finished them all by the end of January and I got admitted in their early admission. And so I was able to have my decision by February um, and already be set up for the summer. Um, it's also the majority of the people in the program will have just finished their junior year of college. So that's like right before you're applying to graduate school, right if you're applying straight from undergrad, so right before your senior year. Um, but they do take a couple of people who have t just finished their sophomore year. But it's usually not like freshmen or something. You, you're gonna wanna be like a little later in your college career. And then where you can find these um, REU sites all over the country. They have a huge list of just your scrolling. Um, you can filter by subject or location. So this is great if you go to a college in a completely different state than where you grew up and you wanna be closer to home for a summer, you can look for ones that are closer to home if you want to. There were a couple of people in my program who did that. Um, and so it's entirely up to you where you wanna look. And then how you just look for one of those sites you're going to need um, like a personal statement of some sort saying why you want to do research, what about this program would be beneficial for you. And then you'll need at least two letters of recommendation at least. I recommend getting someone who knows you from your university, i.e. a class. Maybe you've done a little bit of research at your own institution. Um, just someone who can speak about either your work ethic or your passion for science. Cool. So do you want to walk us through your second infographic? The second infographic is about some other programs that are available to people in the U.S. And there are a couple ones that also have um, availability for international students, um, which is really important because most of the other programs, including the NSF one, exclude international candidates. Um, so the first one is the Big Ten or the Summer Research Opportunities Program at Big Ten Academic Alliance University. So this is um, all the schools that would be considered in the Big Ten. So University of Nebraska-Lincoln is actually included in that, but they have their own separate application. A few of the schools use just like a common application. So you can apply to a bunch of schools at once. Um, the cool thing is a lot of the Big Ten schools, if you do a summer research program there, they waive your um, application fee for graduate school. So I didn't have to worry about an application fee for any of the Big Ten schools because I did a summer internship there. That's cool. Um, Amgen is a, another scholar program. Um, they do have a strict GPA cutoff. Um, so if your GPA is lower than 3.2, you will want to look at other programs. They um, have a program in the U.S. that's um, open to U.S. or domestic students, but they also have programs available in Australia, Europe, 
Canada and Asia. So it does have some opportunities for international students to participate in the program. SURF is the Mayo Clinic Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship in Arizona, Florida, or Miss Minnesota. You have to have a 3.0 GPA to apply. And international students who are attending a U.S. university full-time are eligible to apply. So the SURF, so the Mayo Clinic Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship, is open to international candidates. And then the NIH um, National Institute of Health Summer Internship Program. Um, it's at, also at a lot of different locations, um, but it is only for U.S. candidates. And from what I've heard is you have a lot better luck of getting into this program if you contact a specific lab that is participating. So they do admissions on a rolling basis. And so if you want to participate in the NIH um, summer internship program, it's better to look at the labs that may be participating or are linked there and then apply to them. And then the NIH has made a spreadsheet um, that has a bunch of different programs that are smaller. So maybe not these big national programs, but just smaller ones throughout the US. And that's available as a spreadsheet. So that's there if you want to look further. Cool, that is so helpful. It seems like there's a lot of options uh, for domestic students and for international students. Um, everybody can find something that fits that fits for them. So Remy also mentioned that part of applying for these programs, there's a personal statement and some other things. So I'll link some resources below to how to write generally just personal statements to try to help you guys out to get into these programs. Remy, did you want to add anything else before we, before we leave? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Duh. <laughs> so you're never going to get research experience if you don't try to get research experience. And you can't really pursue a career in research if you don't get research experience. So don't let your fear of failing stop you because trust me, you are good enough to get into one of these programs. You are smart enough and you have the tools to succeed. Thank you, Remy. Good advice for, for any situation in your life, honestly. So make sure to use those resources below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to, and we will see you guys next time. Bye.